Welcome to Focus Washington. I'm Chuck Conconi. My guest today is Bob Cusack, the editor of the Hill newspaper. Bob, thank you for being here. Thank you. This is a wonderful political campaign <laughs> for a journalist, isn't it? But you have, you keep your ear to the ground on Capitol Hill. You're mm -hmm. talking to a lot of people up there. There is this movement to f kind of defeat Trump. Right. Can, will it go anywhere? Uh, I think there are a lot of plans are being hatched now, and certainly this is a huge test for the new speaker, Paul Ryan, as well as the new majority leader, uh, who had been minority leader, Mitch McConnell. What do they do? Uh, they've criticized Trump publicly for his stance uh, on, the, on, on Muslims, as well as the recent KKK controversy, uh, but they have both said that they will support the nominee. So uh, it's certainly getting late in the game. Uh, Donald Trump had a great Super Tuesday. He's not there yet as far as the clinching delegates. But unless something big happens and the establishment coalesces against him, he's going to be the nominee without a doubt. Well, Charlie Cook, who you know very well mm -hmm. in the Cook Political Report, has said that there is no viable alternative to Trump. That, well, that's Where do a, they go? That's a problem. They don't like Ted Cruz. Uh, he doesn't have one <laughs> Senate endorsement, which is something that Trump always knocks him. And Trump does have Senator Jeff Sessions now. Um, they don't like Trump. They, they don't like Cruz. And most Republicans that I talk to actually would prefer uh, Trump over Cruz. And Democrats mm -hmm. also say that. They, yes. they think that, that Cruz would be an easier uh, opponent in the fall to beat. So, uh, yeah, they do still have Marco Rubio, but he's only won one state in Minnesota so far. Uh, Kasich is hoping to win his home state of Ohio. But really, if you win your home state, it doesn't really get you much. The momentum, remember, Donald Trump has been winning this race for seven straight months. I know, and nobody thought that was going to happen. Nobody did. Nope. Now, when you talked to many people on the Hill earlier, they sort of laughed at yeah. the idea of Donald Trump. Yeah, and even we've interviewed Trump three times, and, and the first time was last July, and that was when he had just started to take over the lead from Jeb Bush. And I think even Donald Trump at that point did not see what was going to happen. Um, and then in the third interview, he said, yes, I'm going to close the deal. I'm not going to choke this away. I'm going to close the deal, and I'm going to be the nominee. He has grown more confident. As a candidate, I think he's gotten better. He's so controversial, mm -hmm. though, Chuck. I mean, he's Teflon. He said everything right. under the sun, and it doesn't matter. His numbers keep going up. Yeah, you guys released a piece today of the seven, the seven reasons yeah. Trump is nominating, and, and one of the things you said, he's a Teflon candidate. Yeah, totally Teflon, and he also has a very populist message. Uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's said things that Republicans would never say about uh, that blaming George W. Bush for 9-11. For uh, also going after pharmaceutical companies, going after Wall Street, he's out, uh, gone after CEO pay. These are things you don't hear typical Republicans say, but Republican electorate is rebelling against the establishment. Right. And I don't think there's anything the establishment can do to stop it. I mean, they, like, they like what he says. They like what he does. They like that he's even willing to sass back at the Pope. Yes, yeah. I mean, that, it really is. I mean, <laughs> you know, that if someone who got involved with ties to, you know, KKK and then jarring publicly with the Pope, and this is your front runner, uh, that's why we'll never see anything like this in politics ever again. If the Republicans do stop him, mm -hmm. won't that further anger <laughs> his supporters? Yes, and then that's a big problem at the convention. If Donald Trump doesn't get the <coughs> uh, delegates that he needs, and basically they say, we're going to put Paul Ryan in, or we're going to put Mitt Romney in, or, or somebody else, then the Trump supporters are going to go crazy. And so this is just a, a nightmare uh, for establishment Republicans. There's no good alternative for them, but some Republicans think nominating him is the worst possible scenario because we'll lose the Senate. And potentially, they say, maybe even lose the House for the Republicans. Do they really think so? I mean, if he's so popular, maybe it will help in some of those states. I mean, he's taken on, remember this field on the Republican side was 17 candidates. So he, mm -hmm. he's basically beaten all of them. And so he needs to beat one more, and that's Hillary Clinton. When we last interviewed him, he said, well, maybe I could win New York. I think that's a stretch of his home, his home state, mm -hmm. but it's also kind of her home state. But he said in Pennsylvania, you know, we just, he, needs to, he thinks the map gets bigger with his broad appeal. However, you're already seeing Republicans, uh, Christine Todd Whitman and many others, some on Capitol Hill saying, there is no chance I support Donald Trump. And with a few of them saying, yes, I will vote for Hillary Clinton over Trump. That's a big problem for Trump, not to even mention his problems with Muslims, Hispanics, and African Americans. Well, he can't, he can't defeat Hillary Clinton. and that's the, that's the feeling on Capitol Hill. That's the feeling, but the feeling was he couldn't win the nomination. <laughs> so you never know politics. 
That's a good point. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Chuck. I'm Chuck and Connie, and this has been Focus Washington.